Hi, my name is Marin, and today FM rocks in Lambasa. Mula, my name is Mark. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks in Makassi. Hey, Bula from Rocky Rocky. I'm Mentor. I love listening to Today FM because they're playing my hits. Today FM rocks. My name is Enrico. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks in Suba. Hi, I'm Asunika and I'm from Lotoka and I love Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm Siva. I'm from Bat. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. In this bulletin, early morning fire destroys two flats in a shop. More Fijians to benefit from Pacific Labour Scheme. And Ministry looks at ways to recover outstanding rates. From the studios of FBC Suva, Teva Lendua. Two flats and a shop have been destroyed in a fire which started around 9.30 this morning. The incident occurred in Wayndamundamu, 10 miles, Nosori. Two fire trucks and more than a dozen firefighters responded to the blaze but were unable to save the premises. FBC News understands that a woman was inside the house when the fire started. But eyewitnesses say she was rescued by a few men from the neighborhood. Three children and four adults lived in the two flats. The National Fire Authority will soon start investigations to determine the cause of the fire. The Fiji police force continues to make inroads in efforts to curb the sale and use of all types of drugs. Deputy Police Commissioner Rusiati Tundrabu says they haven't eased off on operations and recent arrests are testament to this. DCP Tundravu adds officers are investigating various aspects, including local supply as well as trafficking by Fiji. Investigation uh, is uh, currently undertaken. Uh, um, we have committed all our resources. Uh, every month we are doing uh, national operations on that. And uh, I can state that the your Fiji police force is doing every effort to mitigate this threat in this country. The Fiji Women's Crisis Centre believes convicted rapists should not be allowed to take part in the Yellow Ribbon event. FWCC coordinator Shamima Ali says Fiji's Corrections Service needs a special program for convicted rapists to help change their mindset about women. Ali says it's imperative that our legal system and relevant bodies set up and help address the issue. We don't even believe that the yellow ribbon should apply to them because most rapists are recidivists. And we have always encouraged the prison system, the correction services, to have some treatment going on with rapists to change their mindset about women. It's a particular mindset that causes them to rape. New Zealand resident Mohammed Rahish Isus lawyer Iqbal Khan has today requested the Lotoka High Court for his client's bail hearing to be heard next week. Isuf is charged with five counts of murder and one count of attempted murder. He is alleged to have murdered a Nandi family a few months ago. Khan told the court that he will be filing an affidavit for a new surety. The prosecution has also stated they will need time to respond to the matter. The bail hearing will be called again on the 13th of November. It's alleged that between 25th and 26th of August this year, Isuf murdered carpenter Irmal Khan, his 54-year-old wife Usha Devi, their 34-year-old daughter Nilesh Nikajal, and her two daughters Sana, aged 11, and Samara, 8. The Employment Ministry is looking to send more Fijians to work in Australia under the Pacific Labour Scheme. Permanent Secretary Osea Thawaru says they continue to update their National Employment Centre data to find suitable persons to meet the demand under the scheme. The scheme is similar to the Seasonal Worker Scheme and has broadened the jobs for Fijians in the meat hospitality and aged care industries. The Waru says they're also looking at other areas that can provide work for Fijians. The Pacific Labour Scheme, this has uh, opened up uh, to other new areas, like the aged care um, for midworks and uh, the hospitality industry. The hospitality industry. And uh, these are the ones that uh, we are working on with the Australian government. 
The local government ministry is working on a system to recover millions of dollars in outstanding rates owed to the various municipal councils around the country. Minister Pramila Kumar confirms around $33 million in unpaid rates still owed to the 13 municipal councils has accumulated over the years. Kumar is disappointed with the figure owed, however, has assured that they will work on recovering the dues. Rate payers have time until December 31st to pay their dues. What each and every municipal council at this stage they're doing is profiling each rate payer. In other words, they're, they're looking at things like the name of the rate payer, the TIN number, is their house rented out, um, and why, and why they are not paying? Is it because the matter is with the public trustee? Is it because there is a dispute? Is it because there is unemployment uh, problem in the household? So we're trying to understand each rate pair. More Fijian naval officers will undergo training and attend short courses at China's Dalian Navy Academy. This has been confirmed by Chinese Ambassador to Fiji, Gyanbo, while welcoming China's Navy training ship at Suvis King's Wharf this morning. The ambassador says the capacity building program for local naval officers is a testament of Fiji and China's strong relationship. The uh, purpose of this trip is certainly to uh, strengthen our friendship and cooperation. And now, we, I, I learned just now that uh, about so far, uh, 14 uh, uh, Fijian Navy uh, officers have been uh, trained in the Dalian, uh, Dalian uh, Navy uh, uh, Academy. The Suva High Court has dismissed the constitutional redress application of former Suva lawyer Shazran Abdul Latif. Latif filed an application against the Attorney General's Office, the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions and the Suva Remand Center. Representing himself, Latif told the court that he wanted to withdraw the applications since he has been granted bail by the magistrate's court earlier. He stated the initial application was to redress him being allegedly remanded unlawfully. Latif had claimed that he had been held in remand for 10 weeks over an alleged minor offence. Coming up, Jerry Dewey wins prestigious Sevens Awards and World Cup victory more than just a win. Stay with us. Ako itabua, agito talita na na barong na bula FM, nambando na sir. Bula, alam ko noa, iluto ka, agito talita ka na bula FM, bulti na nambando na sir. Ni bula pina ka, nandrekin ko sa bula FM nga, e na kasi. Nandrekin ko sa mundo at siyo na bula FM, nambando na sir nusur. Ni bula pina ka, nandrekin ko Jerry, e ang belampasa, agito barong nga e na bula FM, nambando na. Bula FM, nambando na sir. Jerry Tawai has scooped the World Rugby Men's Sevens Player of the Year award. Meanwhile, the Springboks have kept up their World Cup triumph by cleaning up at the World Rugby Awards in Tokyo, Japan. South Africa won all the top honours. As South Africans continue to celebrate Saturday's World Cup win, once an all-white team and symbol of South Africa's deep racial divide, the Springboks are now a truly multiracial team led by their first black captain, Sia Khaleesi. Meanwhile, the South African High Commission's charge d'affaires in Fiji, Bingo Thamanga, says he was a nervous wreck throughout the 80 minutes of the 2019 Rugby World Cup final Saturday night. Thamanga says his eyes filled with tears of joy when South Africa won its third title. The South African joined his team captain in saying that this World Cup has united the nation. We only hope that this is an inspiration to the nation to revisit the nation building process so that the racial divisions of the past are healed and buried forever in our country. Everton scored a late goal as the side held Tottenham to a one-all draw in the English Premier League this morning. The results leaves Spurs in 11th spot on the table while Everton is now 17th.
fine weather with breezy conditions prevail over most parts of the country. There is a slim chance of light showers, especially along eastern shores late in the evening. And that is your FBC News Now. Remember to join us at 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. For these stories and others, you can also tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Enjoy your lunch. Good afternoon. My name is Neha and I'm from Karavi and Mirchi FM is hot. Hama chale nasori se Mirchi FM bahut julum. Hi, I am Shara Prakash baat karta hai aur tawa mein Mirchi FM sab kunsan and Mirchi FM is hot. Hi, my name is Prashant. I live in Suva. I love Mirchi FM because Mirchi FM is hot. Hi, I'm Shane. I love uh, listening to Mirchi FM because it's awesome and it's hot. Hi, I'm Rachel and I'm Shavi. We, we love, love listening to Mirchi FM in Lambasa. Mirchi FM. It's hot.